morning, everybody. Today is the last day of February 2022. You know what that means? Tomorrow is a new calendar day. Shall we come over to the calendar and have a sneak peek at what yes. Chloe's going to look like yes. in March? Yes. Here was her February portrait. This is one of my favorites. I just want you to know right here. Look at that. Look at that! That's me and Miss Chloe and Miss Chloe's little baby. That's a toy. That's just a little toy. But there we are in the sewing room. She came to visit us here at work one time. And we got a picture of her. And it's so cute. Gee, my little baby wavy. So tomorrow, Tuesday, March 1st. Now that's an exciting day for me because I'm going to get on an airplane. I'm going to go to Texas. I'm going to visit with my friend Tammy. We're going to go to the world's largest flea market in Canton, Texas. I'll tell you more about that later. I'm so excited. If I get to talking too fast, it's because I am so excited to share with you this video today. I have been looking forward to this. I didn't sleep well last night because I kept dreaming of all the things I had to tell you. So we're going to, Peter and I are going to come up with a code word for when I'm talking too fast and I need to slow down. He's just going to say, let's see what could the code word be. Slow down. That's the code word right there. Hey, Dawn, slow down. Because I have so much to tell you, I just can't hardly. But I'm it. so excited too. So yeah, I'm, you're I'm listening you're just listening as fast just as you're as talking. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so awesome. But one thing I want before we let's just get this out of the way before we even start with the meet me at the sew machine on Fridays uh, for the last two months because we started it in January, didn't we? Start in January. The ribbon runs through it, Peter. I think we did start in January. Uh, but anyway. Needless to say. I believe so. I believe we did. So in January, we started Ribbon Runs Through It. And every Friday, we uh, do a portion of this quilt. And it looks like this. It's called A Ribbon Runs Through It. And it is a gorgeous, a beautiful, and luscious. And we have three opportunities left. Three opportunities if you want to get in on Ribbon Runs Through It. We have a special Facebook group, and we all interact with each other. We have lots of fun. We do lots of fun posts. Like uh, this week, we're getting ready to uh, draw a name for everybody who posted uh, their favorite or their working pin cushion uh, on the Facebook page. We're gonna take those names. We're gonna put them in a fishbowl, and we're gonna draw out a name and they're gonna win a prize. So that's kind of fun. We uh, share our difficulties with each other. We uh, have a um, tutorial every week on uh, a portion of the block. And we've almost finished this blo these blocks inside here. But if you would join us on this adventure, you can go back, you can join the Facebook group, and you can go back and you can watch each and every one of those and get caught up lickety-split with us. But we only have three kits left. If you want to join us, you go to the website, Always in Stitches 1, and you look under Classes. And then under the Classes, you look under Clubs. And then you go to Clubs, and you'll see a ribbon runs through it. Uh, the kit's $399, but this quilt is $99 by $99. It includes everything but the backing. It does include the border, but not the backing. It does include the binding. So for uh, $400, you have a, a beautiful quilt that is 99 by 99. That is humongous. So if you have a queen size, a king size bed, this is what uh, it would fit. So it's, it's an awesome opportunity. We're loving the quilt blocks. We're learning a lot with each other. So don't miss out. Three kits left. So I wanted to get that out of the way today. So let's put that away. I'll put it over here out of the way. And then we took a survey at uh, one of our uh, Meet Me at the Sew Machines, and people said they'd like the idea of doing a book review. Doesn't that sound like fun? I love book reviews. Yeah. So I'm going to pick Especially when they're quilting. Yeah, quilting books. Because I don't read. 
anything but quilting books. I, you know, quilting magazines, mm-hmm. quilting books. Yep, anything I'm right to do there with, with quilting. You. you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be reading no romance novels. Okay, because that's just not where I'm at. But anyway, if you love to read, uh, kudos to you. That's really uh, uh, something I don't get into, never have. But anyway, this book is Treasure Hunt. And it's 13 quilts inspired by antique finds. And in the book, I read this book, it's by Lisa and Lee. Uh, In this book, they talk about how they find their antique quilts. You know, you can find them everywhere. Mm. So they talk about how you can do that. And look at some of these quilts. Look, there's the old one. And there's the one they reproduced to look like the old one. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That's incredible. I know. I love that. So there's the antique. There's the reproduction. And here they are out scavenging for treasure hunting for their quilts. They find them at flea markets, garage sales, antique stores, uh, online auctions. They go to quilt uh, festivals. They do all kinds of things and they tell you all about that in here. And it's fun to read it about their adventures. But see, look, here's some old quilts just hanging outside in a flea market. Look at that one that they found. And they know what they're looking for, you know. And when you're antiquing and you find a quilt and you wonder if it's worth anything, if you like it, it's worth whatever you're willing to pay. That's the worth, okay? Don't worry about is it going to increase in value. It's going to be worth what you want to pay and how much you love it and how much you want it to be in your life. So that's what that's what I gauge my... I have a side note. What is we, it? We rescued a quilt. The shop did. Uh-huh. It's hanging up there. It's the Dresden plate quilt. Right. And it's my favorite quilt. One of I'm going to say one of my favorite quilts that we rescued. And I've been here for a while now. And um, every time I'm on my lunch break, I always look at it. It's like my favorite thing to look at mm-hmm. after my lunch break. Because it's across from the couch. Let's and every... just get real. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But, That's where he takes his lunch break. At the but couch. <laughs> that it's amazing how yeah. much inspiration that that quilt has given me. I know. And that See? that amount of inspiration to get from an antique quilt is priceless. And probably every time you look at it, you notice something different. Yes, I do. Yeah, yes, See? I do. The way the colors are arranged, how the designer did the stitching, or something. There's always yeah, something new something I notice. Something fun. Something fun. And that's what you can gain from getting antique quilts, you know. So this is a fun book, and it talks about like you know that that's the antique, Pretty. maybe. I can't remember. But anyway, it talks about that. But what they did was they took antiques and they reproduced them in fabrics of today. Look at that. There's the antique. Mm. And there's the one that they uh, reproduced. Mm. So I'm not going to show you the whole book because I don't want you to look at the instructions. But look at that. Don't look at the instructions. But isn't that pretty? So here's the design. Uh This is the This is the the antique. That's the antique. Oh, wow. I think. Somebody was talking about that pattern the other day. Look at this. Look at this. I don't remember who it was. I don't know. Look at this. That's the antique. There's the reproduction. Isn't that pretty? So you can get inspiration. And I think this is a good book. It's got 13 quilts in it. So it retails for $27.99. We have several in stock. So if this is something you're interested in, Peter will put the information in the drop box below. So that's that. Let's put that out of our way. Now let's get to the juicy part of why we're here today. We're going to start our adventure in four inch blocks. I am so excited. You know, it was all inspired by the potato chip block because it's a four inch block. Now, how many of you are, are sticking with the challenge of making potato chip blocks? One of our customers, she's already made a whole quilt out of her potato chip box. She made the eight inch ones instead of the wow. four inch ones. Wow. But then with her babies, I showed you how to make babies from your half square triangles. She made little pinwheels and put them in a border on the outside edge. Oh my gosh, wow. it's so adorable. It is so, so adorable. And she just used scraps that she had at home, just out of her scrap bin. So that was fun to see. And uh, so I hope that you guys are doing them. 
If you are, you can post pictures on our Insider, Always in Stitches Insider group on Facebook. You can go there and post pictures, and we're oh so excited to see everything that you guys are doing. So, got out my schoolgirl sampler. This is the book we're going to use as our textbook for making our four uh, inch blocks. There's 72 in here, and it says simple. Now, last week, I was talking about the scale of the fabric, and I said, some of these blocks might have 38 pieces. I was exaggerating. None of these blocks have 38 pieces. Don't let that scare you. I was just being me. <laughs> just being me, you Wishful know. thinking. Wishful thinking, whatever. But anyway, I was trying to get the point across that you needed small prints. That's what I was trying to do. But these are easy blocks. And sometimes we're even going to do two blocks because they are so easy. Okay? So uh, that's going to be exciting. If you don't have this book, it's going to be hard to make the blocks because I'm not going to give you any in um, dimensions. Dimensions. No, no cutting instructions on how uh, what size to cut because I can't do that because the book is copyrighted and you'd need the book to follow along. Okay, but in the book, in the introduction and in uh, her little uh, bio here, and talking about what inspired her to do this book was, uh, look at these people right here, Peter. Look at these. Look at this picture of all these people. Now, I don't know if those are her real relatives or they're made-up relatives. You know, you can go to the antique store and buy these pictures and make up that they're your relatives, and that's what I do because I don't have pictures of my relatives. Evidently, they didn't like me, so uh, I make up my own relatives, and I just go to the antique store, buy old pictures, and, oh, this Aunt Nellie. You know, she's on aunt from my grandpa's side, you know. And I just make up all, all kinds of uh, uh, stories about them. And um, that's kind of fun for me. But in this book, she talks about uh, where women got patterns when there were no patterns. Oh, we're so lucky today. Because all we have to do is go to the store, buy a book that has 72 uh, blocks in it. How, how wonderful is that? You got to think that, you know, even 300 years ago, there probably was not the selection of patterns available. And how did they get them? They didn't have any internet. You know, did they come from the Pony Express? I don't know. I don't know. Was that 300 years ago, the Pony Express, or was that even earlier? Who knows? I, I don't, don't know. I'm not good on history. Don't I'm read. Not good on history. Remember, I said I don't read. I don't read history books. So there you go. But what is exciting is... That would have to be the beginning of the Postal Service in the United States. There you go. So it would have to be late 1700s. Okay, late 1700s, whatever. Okay, so... I could be wrong. You could, but, you know... We'll but I, I took a stab if at I it. Can I tried. Make up, if I can make up relatives, <laughs> you can make up history. Okay? We'll make a deal, okay? We'll make a pact on that. So let's get back to the book. So she was talking about how women would get... Their patterns, their different patterns. Who's going to make a nine patch for the rest of their life? No, they wanted adventure. They wanted fun. So they would play around with their fabric and do different designs. And maybe they would come up with something really fun and exciting. And they'd want to share that with somebody. Well, do you think they got on their iPhone? No, they didn't have iPhones, people. So they uh, had to uh, wait until they got together at a social. Now, this is what I think is so fun about this book and how she talks about how they would get together and they would have these baskets or boxes or uh, all kinds of, of memory collections, okay? And they would put them in some kind of container and she mostly refers to boxes, memory boxes. And that's where they would keep their precious patterns. But they weren't really patterns like we think of today. They were the actual blocks. Because let's say uh, Sally from down the uh, acreage, you know, at the end of the two-mile block, whatever, she discovered a block that her great-grandmother did. Well, when they came to the social, she would share that with everybody, and everybody would just be taken uh down all the measurements and and trying to sketch it out and and then they would go home and make their own block and then they would put it in their memory box as their pattern 
And that's how they would collect their patterns from time to time to time. You know, when we get together today, and nobody speaks to each other because they're all on their iPhone doing this. You know, nobody's socializing. I think that it would be so wonderful to have a group of people that you could get together with and say, oh, look what I discovered. Oh, look what I, I, I learned this week. I made this walk, and oh, it's so fun, and look at how I did this, and look at how I did that. And then also, the fabrics were part of the memories. Because they just couldn't go over to the Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana and have their pick of any kind of fabric they could possibly ever dream of. They had to work with what they had. So Nellie would have a nightgown from when she was two years old. She's outgrown it and all of her siblings has outgrown it. And, you know, they've all worn it and it's frazzled to the edges. And But there's still maybe some good... Uh, places in it so they would cut up and use the good fabrics and they would get their memory boxes and they would make their patterns with all these fabrics that they had laying around that were actually used for something else and so they would pull out this block and they'd say you know they're like Nellie's 42 now, but when she was two, she had this nightgown, and her mom still remembers. And her mom would get that out and say, oh, I made this out of Nellie's nightgown when she was two, and look at how, you know. So the memories were the, the blocks, the patterns, and the fabric. How fun is that? Now, today, there's not much memory going on, but let me tell you this. When I go to Texas this week... I'm going to the world's largest flea market. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I mean, I'm, I'm almost so excited I could wet my pants because I'm so excited. I'm going to go to Canton, Texas, the world's largest flea market, and I am going to look for me a memory box. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to jump out at me, and I don't care how much it costs. I'm going to, well, I do care how much it costs, but, you know, I'm going to pay for one that I really fall in love with. But if I don't find one, I've got a backup. This is my backup box. This is a box I painted in 1990. Peter and I said that that was 32 uh, years ago, but you know, we're not good uh, in history, so. But I painted this box. It is a uh, bride's box, a Pennsylvania Dutch style bride's box. This is German. I don't know what it says. I used to know what it said, and I had a card inside it at one time that said what it said, but um, I don't remember now. And then, oh, here's what it says. Oh, look. I, <laughs> here's what it says. <laughs> My heart shall be devoted only to you. I knew it was going to be something sappy. So here, that's, <laughs> that's what this says. I wrote it in English on the inside. How smart of that was of me. That was, that was 32 <laughs> years ago. How can I remember these things? But anyway, that's what that says. Isn't that nice? So girls uh, that came over from Germany to Pens and settled in Pennsylvania, and they uh, several um, artisans brought over this style of painting. And they would paint brides' boxes, and they would sell them at the local market. And the brides, I mean, the little girls would buy them, and they would put all their treasures in their brides' box, waiting for the day when they got married. So this was kind of like their dowry, you know. They probably would put any kind of, back then, stitching, uh, if you could do a, a nice stitch, that was important. And so probably some of their stitching was in here, and maybe they had a set of silverware that they would put in here, or a teacup that was special to them, or something like that. So bright boxes have been around for centuries, and uh, this is one of my favorite paintings I ever did. And I'm going to, if I don't find something at the world's largest flea market in Canton, Texas, did I tell you I was going to that? Okay, uh, then I'm going to use this, and look what's inside. <laughs> started my four inch blocks. How exciting is that? So here are the first two in the book. Page 40 is where they start. This is number one. This is number two. Today we're going to make this one. 
And right now it's four and a half inches because it's not sewn in yet. Mm. Okay, so we're talking that we're making four inch blocks. We're actually talking that we're making four and a half inch blocks before they're sewn in. So don't get confused by that, okay? I can tell you that measurement because it's right on the cover of the book, hello. So then anyway, I have to pick out my fabrics and I talked to you about that last month, I mean last week. And here's my fabric that uh, I showed you last week. I brought a little more in because uh, I just grabbed some out of my collection. And I keep mine in colorways. Now, this is how a collection comes. And then I would refold it into uh, what way fits my container the best. And then I have a nice selection of lights. And then I put them in colorways. So my greens, my reds, my purples, my golds and oranges. Uh, this is kind of my uh, grays and browns. Then I've got this tealy blue, dark blue and black, and then my creams. So, but, so I would refold these and put them into my collection. So then as I go to pick out my squares, my fabrics for my squares, I'm just going to pick from this box. This is going to be my source right here, okay? So you have to decide where your source is going to come from. Are you just going to blindfold pull out something out of your stash? Ooh, that'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? But because I want to have a memory box and a quilt from this adventure that we're going on, I'm going to make two of each block, okay? I'm going to make one that's going to go in my quilt, and then I'm going to make one that's going to go in my memory box. And because it's a memory box, I want to use a piece of fabric that contains a memory. And this is some fabric that Peter bought me. I was lusting over it, drooling over it here in the shop one day, and it went into the clearance uh, room, and, and then they cut it into one of them three-yard cuts before... Uh, no, it didn't go in the clearance room. It was back there because it was cut into a three-yard cut. End of Isn't bolt. that right? Yeah, end, end of, of bolt. bolt. That's what it was, the end of the bolt. And I was drooling over it, but, you know, I feel so guilty that I have so much fabric, and I didn't buy it. And then I got home, wished I'd buy it, bought it, and I thought, yeah, if it's there the next time I come in, I'm going to get it. And here it was in my mailbox. Peter Yay. had bought that for me. So now that's a memory, you that's see. That's exciting. And that's a fun memory to that share. It is a fun memory. It is a fun memory. So all the blocks that go in my memory box are going to have this fabric in it in some way or another. Isn't that going to be exciting? I'm That's so exciting. Excited. I'm so excited. So I picked some fabrics, and I thought, well, I'm going to play around with my fabrics. Now, in the book, I can't really show you the instructions in the book, okay? But in the book, how they describe the fabrics is by their value. Dark, medium, mm. light. I like it when they do that. Yeah. But what does that mean? If you're not into color theory, or you don't know a lot about color, that might not mean diddly squat to you, dark, medium, and light. What does that mean? Well, I know what light is, and I know what dark is, and maybe I know what medium is, but how do I relate that to my fabrics, you see? Very carefully. Yeah, very carefully. And one thing that you have to know is the most important thing is the contrast. Now, that's a whole different thing. That doesn't have anything to do with determining the value. It has to do with value, but it doesn't have anything to do with determining the value. Contrast is when you can tell the difference between a color and another color. So look at this block right here that has the pinwheel in it, Peter. Okay. See how this is much darker than this fabric. This fabric is the light fabric. This fabric is the dark fabric. Had I used this fabric and then come in with this fabric as the pinwheel, well, you wouldn't see the pinwheel because it's the same value. There's no contrast. Do you see that? So you want something that has contrast. And the way she describes contrast in this book is by value. There's several ways that you can determine or get contrast, okay? But in this book, she is getting her contrast from values. So let's talk a little bit about values. Okay, in this, uh, in my 
a memory box, this is always going to be my light value fabric. Now, how can you really call that light? If I had this fabric in my block with this, this would no longer be the light fabric. This would be the light fabric. Color affects color. Value affects color affects value okay so if I have a fabric that I call light and I put a lighter color with it it no longer is the light okay but if I put a fabric like this that is dark this definitely is the light right now what would be the medium could that be a medium there is a little bit of contrast there. I wouldn't say a lot. I wouldn't say that that's enough contrast to put in one of these blocks because when you get far, far back, they're going to look like the same fabric. They're not going to give you a lot of design change because they're so similar, you see? So probably I wouldn't use this fabric in a block that touches this fabric. I could use it in a, in a block, as long as it didn't touch this fabric. You see that? As long as it was someplace else in the block. What if I needed, this is my light, and I needed a medium and a dark to go with it. And I had these to choose from right here. Okay? Well, this is a nice color. That's kind of a medium value. There's two kinds of contrast here. There's color contrast because they're two different colors. And that automatically gives you contrast right there. And this one is just a little bit darker than this one. Not a lot. Doesn't give you a lot of contrast. What about this? This is kind of in the same color family, but it's a lot darker. Do you see that? See how I can get good contrast with that? That is really, it contrasts in value and in color. This one's much darker. See how much darker it is mm. than this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I have, if this is going to be my medium, then I'm going to need something really dark to be my dark. Could I use this as my dark? Well, heck no. These are two are pretty much the same value. Even though they're different colors, they're the same value. They don't contrast very well. Okay, they do contrast because they're different colors, but they don't contrast very well. Same with this. These contrast really good because they are two completely different colors that really stand out from each other. But I still want something that says dark, medium, and light. So I think I kind of like this combination. Uh, I could maybe even go with... What about this as a combination? That being my medium and that being my dark. Mm. Ooh, I love that. Mm. That's subtle. That's real subtle. That's subtle. not as, as in your face or as punchy as this, even though this would be attractive. And mm -hmm. I do love that. I do too. I do love that. Uh, but I think I like this really, really well. So this is going to be my choice for today's block. I'm going to make this block with these three fabrics, sorry. Mm -hmm. So this block is going to go in my quilt because it's from my Kim Deal stuff. This block is going to go in my memory box. So let's go over to the sewing machine and let's make this block together. I've already got it cut. I've got to get my rotary cutter. Gotta get my ruler. Oh, I was gonna show you cutting the fabric. Let's come back here. Let's come back here. Okay, let me put that there. This is actually gonna be my dark in my my uh, little collection here. So I'm using fat quarters because that's what I've got. And I've got this fat quarter, and you, you, you know how I determine the straight edge. You know, I hold it up until that fold uh, drops completely flat. You know, there's no wiggle in the, in the uh, 
fold. But look at how crooked that is. So you know this fabric uh, was not cut straight when they cut the fat quarter. So somehow, some way, I've got to get the straight out of this. So I know I've showed this to you before, but I'm going to show you again because it never hurts to repeat. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my fold line, and hopefully it's pretty parallel to my salvage. And it is. It's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to come over to this end, and I'm going to straighten me an edge. See, I can tell that that's pretty straight. I'm going to get as close as I can, so I'm not wasting any fabric, close as I can to the shortest part of the edge. There. Cut me off. Of, see, now that's just good for tying. You know what this is good for? Tying your plants to a stake. Have you ever done that? I mean, I don't, I don't waste my nothing. tomato plants, but not with my I'm fabric scraps. I'm telling you, Peter. That's I don't, genius. I don't waste anything. It's cotton. It's a natural fiber. It's not going to hurt your plant. No. Isn't that amazing? And it breathes. It breathes. It won't mess it up. It I love that. It will not cut into the. So anyway, so yeah, I, I I use everything. I I mean, you know, I'm frugal. I I must have come from pioneer days. I was not born during the depression, but I'm frugal. Okay, so. I know that I need a certain size, so I'm going to cut a strip that size. And you're going to have to refer to the book. This is my dark piece. So what the book says to cut your dark, that's what you need to cut. And I need to cut four of them. So this is my little salvage edge here. I'm going to cut there. I cut two off, but I cut them big. So I could get my salvage out of the way when I make my next cut. I'm just going to lay that right on top of there. Because I don't want to have to make two cuts. That just wastes time. I'll lay that right on top of there. And now I'm going to cut all four of them at the same time. And there we go. I've got four of my dark value prints. You can guess what size they are or look in your book. I'm going to be showing. This is my one of my favorite uh, uh I love, squaring up I love tools. that ruler. It, it, That's there, my it comes favorite, in too. Nine and a half triangle square up ruler. Comes in six and a half. It also comes in four and a half. We don't have any in stock. Yeah, I have the six and a half. Do, it's the I most love that versatile. Size. Yeah, yeah That's it's the, the most, most versatile. versatile. And this is the first one that they made. And then they came out with the four and a half, and then they came out with the nine and a half, or vice versa. I can't remember. But this one's fun to travel with. And, uh, Put I, it in your back pocket. It's actually the only one I could find this morning because I think my six and a half is here. No, it's not. It must be at home, but I don't know where it's at. So anyway, this is the only one I could find. Oh, it's in your ruler case, Dawn. That big ruler case oh, you bought. Oh, that's what it is. That is what, probably where yeah. it is. You are so right. So I'm going to show you how to use this here in, in a minute. So I'm going to bring my rotary cutter over here. I'm going to bring my squares over here. I'm going to mark. Okay, I'm going to make half square triangles. Because see right here. I've got, oh, I, another thing I brought today. What did I do with it? I brought me a little smaller layout board. So I was thinking I was going to lay this out on the oh on the ironing board. That's but, convenient. Yeah, a little smaller one. Yeah, yeah. So that makes it nice. So here are uh, the colors that I used in my original block that I'm going to make me a potato chip. Oh. As I was cutting uh, out that block, uh -huh. I cut me a potato chip. Potato chip. Uh huh. And look, these are all ready to potato chip little sets of potato chip blocks. Oh, wow. So all I have to do is add that to my stack, you see. That's a great idea. And if you'll remember, the and potato chip. that's the chip, quilt behind you, right? Yeah, that's the quilt behind me. And if you'll remember, it takes a two and a half inch square. It takes uh, four of these one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles that we're gonna do flying, that we make into flying geese. It takes eight of the color of our wings. So see, we would, you know, we would do that. We would make the wing with these eight, and then it takes four corners to make the potato chip block. And whatever color you use for your wings, that's gonna be the color of your star. So let me show you, here's what we're making. See, here's what we're making right there. 
So I just have these laid out at home. And if I have 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, five minutes, however many minutes I have between fixing dad something to eat, waiting for the oven to warm up, whatever, I can go in my sewing area and I can just pick me up a little pile right there. I can sew me a block. See, I already got them all made. Wow. All, all ready to go. Wow. See, isn't that fun? Yeah, that's fun. And so I uh, might have to get me a little box just to keep those in, just to keep my potato chips in. Yeah. Peter, it yes. could be my potato chip bag. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> your potato chip bag. Yeah, you know the potato chips used to come in a big tin, a uh, big tin. Remember those? Oh, Charlie's yeah. potato chips. Remember yeah, yeah, Charlie's yeah. potato no, chips? No, I don't. But no, you're too that young. That sounds amazing. You're too young. It was a big tin, about like that. If I could find me one of them Charlie's I potato chips. I bet you'll chips, be able to. I'm going to be buying me a Charlie's potato chip tin to keep my potato chip walks in. Won't that be just the bee's knees? That's going to be so much That'll fun. That'll be the snake okay. tips. I know. Another another fun thing to look for when I am um, at, the world's, at the world's largest flea market in Canton, Texas. I'm going to draw a line here on my uh, two squares that are going to be my um, half square triangles. I don't know where my, oh here it is. I like to use a mechanical pencil or chalk. That's the only thing I like to mark my um, blocks with. And you know what? This is so slick that it's sliding all over the place. So I'm going to put it here on my, on my little. You know, you're still at a point in point up in your little holder over there. It's uh -huh. just it's freaking me out. Is it? Because you're afraid you're going to get, out. you're afraid you're, uh, I'm going to stick myself. Slice your, yeah, slice your arm when you reach across it. Well, I'm not going to, I promise. Oh, that's better. That makes me feel I'll better. Move it out of the way. That took the anxiety down a notch. Okay. Now, <laughs> when I do these half square triangles, I have made them bigger. In the book, the measurement ends in seven eighths. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mess with that mm -hmm. seven eighths. Mm -hmm. So I bumped it up an eighth oh, and yeah. made it a whole figure. Oh, so good. when you look at the instructions in the book, they're right under here. This is where the the uh, cutting uh, measurements are. When it says something and seven eighths, just go ahead and make it up to the next a number. Mm -hmm. So that's what these are. They're a little bit oversized. That's fine. I'm going to size them when I make the square. So here I'm going. I'm going to take and put this on my quarter inch. Maybe I'll do it this way. Put that on my quarter inch. You know what? I you cannot sew on. with my shoes on. You got on. your shoes on. I'm going to take my shoes off. Okay. Oh, look at those fun socks. Yeah, they don't match. I couldn't find two that match today, so I just wore these. So then I'm going to do that. And what is happening is I am sewing a quarter inch away from my line. Now, if I have these lines on my, uh, on my sewing machine, I don't have to draw the lines. But I draw the lines for you guys that want the lines drawn. But I wouldn't have to draw the lines because I have it here on my sewing machine. So now I'm just going to do the other side. See, there's my line. I've sewed a quarter inch away from my line. So now I'm going to do the other side. And each one of these is going to yield me two half square triangles. And isn't that convenient since I need four for this block? See how that works, the math? If you need four, make four. Okay, there we go, there we go. Now I could use my rotary cutter for that. Or I could just take my scissors. Since I'm only doing two, if I had 42 to do, mm. I'd be whipping those out with my rotary cutter. But... Because I only have two here, I'm just going to use my scissors. And I'm not going to cut off my ear, my dog ears. And I'm going to show you why. Because... They're oversized. They are oversized. And they're going to get snipped when you square the block. And when I square the block, I'm not going to open them first. Okay? Because if I opened this up, look what I would have to contend with. 
first of all, I'd have to contend with those. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, I'd yeah. have to contend with four sides. If I leave them closed, and I know the measurement that they need to be because the book tells me, mm -hmm. okay? The book tells me what they need to be. I'm going to lay this right on my seam line, the size I need them to be, right on my seam line, the line. And you can see how it's oversized. Can they see how it's oversized yeah. a little bit there, Peter? Yeah. Okay, then I'm just going to take my rotary cutter. I'm going to cut it like that. That's perfectly exactly. And now it is the perfect. I'm going to snip those little dog ears off before I open it. And now it is the perfect size to go into my block. Oh, my God. It's so cute. And look, look at, at how, that cute little block. Look at how it contrasts. <sighs> See how those uh. two. Now, let me warn you. If you're using fabric that's directional. Warning. Warning. Warning, Will Wheaton. Who's Will Wheaton? He's from know. Star Trek. It's, uh, it's somebody else, Will. It's from, uh, I can't remember what that show was called. Somebody tell me what that show was called. It had a robot, and uh, it had a grandpa and the family, and they were in a spaceship, and I can't remember what the name of that show was. Uh, oh, shoot. But anyway, I'll remember it in my sleep tonight, and then I'll wake up, and I'll scream it out, and then you won't be here to hear me. Well, you can put it in the comments on the YouTube channel yeah. when you wake up in the middle of the night and yeah. scream it out. Yeah, that's what I have to do. <laughs> Does anybody know the name of that store, that show I'm talking about? Um, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! That's what it was called. I don't know what that Will guy's name was, but anyway. What brought that up? Who, who knows? Who knows what we were talking about? We were talking about, about um, directional. Uh, and I said, directional. warning, warning. Oh, yeah, warning, warning. That's what the robot used to say. <laughs> That's how I got into that, okay? The robot would go around going, warning, warning, warning. Okay, look at how I can do a, a, a robot uh, impression. That's pretty good, don't you think? That was really good. I may want another career, maybe in acting or something. But That'd anyway, um, so if you're using a directional fabric... Where's my block? Is it in your box? No, it's right here. Your memory box? I should have my block right here in front of me. Look at how this fabric is directional. And look at how I tediously... Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I had to rip this out a couple times to get this directional going right. But see how that's directional? Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty cool? That's cool. So I, I, I worked on that. I ain't going to be that picky every time, but I thought that was pretty fun. But you were having fun being picky on that I one. I was. I was because I had the time. Yep. And, you know, it's I was fun. just being fun. It's it was fun to be picky fun. for the it first was. couple it was, ones. It was just being fun. And I wasn't any under any pressure. I sewed a lot this weekend. Yeah. Did you sew any this weekend? I did. Did you? Yep. Okay, good. It feels good, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my clapper, which we have some now. We have plenty of clappers. And I am going to open my seams. You know I am, because that's what I love. I'm going to open my seams. Now, when I first saw this block in the book, I thought to myself, why in the world are they making half-square triangles and then putting a color the same color right beside it and making this unit when that's just a half of a flying geese without that seam right there so that's just an extra seam I don't understand but if you made that as a whole piece you'd have to put this block together with a set in seam mm. I didn't think anybody would want to do that and I don't think the designer did so that's why she created the block this way you kind of have to think about those things I mean it's not hard to do a set in seam it wouldn't have been hard to put this in as a set in seam, but because uh, right on the cover she says these are simple, she wanted to make it simpler. And uh, if you use the right kind of fabric, you're not even going to notice. <laughs> What's so funny? Is that not a word, simpler? No, it is. It just made me laugh. We have a book out there that says quick and easy. Um, it's a the big book of quick and easy quilts. And what is and are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking to do a shop sample one day, and I was like, oh, good, quick and easy. Yeah. So I opened up the book and looked at the instructions for the quilts, and I was like, well, these aren't quick oh, and easy. Oh, no, no false advertisement. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, so I'm going to lay this out. Now, look, here's the layout. So underneath here, it says what 
size to cut D, what size to cut these half square triangles that I just made, and then square them up to the same size as D. There's E and another D. So here's my fabrics. I've got, this is my D. This is my B and C. So see how that's going to go together like that? This is my E, which is my dark. So I've got my medium, light, my dark. And then I'm going to use this one. Oh, oh, look, I left some seam allowance on there. Ooh, didn't cut that off. Oh, well. It'll get sewn Life in. goes on. It'll and get then, sewn in. Okay, and then over here, these next two pieces, I've got this. Then I got another one of these. And I always am going to lay this out exactly. Look at that. See how I laid that out at first, and then I noticed that the seam went that way? Well, you know, I have to make that adjustment, and mm -hmm. it's got to go with this light there. Mm -hmm. Because this is this. Yep. This right here is light the same as the that light on the inside. And then where's my two-inch? There's my two-inch square. It's going to go right there. And then I've got this is going to go there. And then I've got another dark one there. And then I've got another medium one there, and then another half square triangle there, and another dark one. And look at how it works out. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together, don't you? A dark, really. Oh, isn't that yummy, delicious? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to sew it together now that we have it all laid out. That's why these boards are so nice. I love these. All this is is a piece of foam core. Got it from the dollar store, okay? Which just irritates the heck out of me because it, nothing's a dollar anymore. It's all a dollar it? twenty-five. Dollar buck twenty-five. Yeah, so they gotta change the name, I think. Yep. Yeah. They might as well change it to a buck fifty. Yeah, because you know it's yeah. gonna go up. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good point, Peter. I hadn't thought buck of that. 50. Buck fifty. So I'm gonna take these two pieces. And of course, I'm going to sew them together. They should be exactly the same size. If they're not, then there's a problem with your cutting. When you're sewing this little, you've got to be accurate in your cutting. There's just no choice. That's just one of the things that comes along with cut, sewing small, is cutting accuracy. Another thing that is super, super important, important is your quarter inch seam. Now, I've been sewing so long, I know what a quarter inch seam looks like pretty much without even having to measure it. But a quarter inch seam is super duper important. I'm not talking a scant quarter inch. The times you want to use a scant quarter inch is if you're not pressing open. Use an accurate quarter inch if you're pressing open, okay? So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to lightly press it with my fingers. I'm going to lay it back down on my board where it goes. Then I'm going to pick these two up. I'm going to sew these two together. And as soon as I sew this, now if I were sewing two or three or four of these and they all looked exactly the same, I'd be chain piecing this one. I'd be chain piecing it. Okay. Now I'm going to press this with my finger. Till I get it all sewn in a row, I'm going to press it with my finger. And I'm not using any pins yet because I don't have any uh, points or any seams that I'm really matching up. Now I'm going to sew these two together. See how I keep it in order? Because that's going to help me from having to um, rip seams. As long as I've got that in order. Okay. I'm going to sew. And another thing I'm going to do, is I didn't, and I should have, is mm. I'm going to lower my stitch length a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Can you help at the cutting table, please? We need help at the cutting table. They need help at the cutting table if you guys, anybody wants to come over and help at the cutting table. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so I'm going to lower my stitch length. It was 2.5. Let me uh, clear this out. It's 2.2. I like to go down to about 1.8. All right, if I was foundation piecing, I'd go down to 1.5. 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 
But since I'm just sewing small, I'm going to go to 1.8. I can't believe the difference it makes, Dawn. It makes a it lot of makes difference. It makes a huge difference. It does. It makes a lot of difference. So now... I notice my blocks aren't coming open on the edges. Right. That's exactly right. And then now I'm going to I'm so take glad you have one. me using a smaller seam allowance. Okay. Because well. before I used to be stuck on using a, a little wider one because uh -huh. I thought it went faster. Uh-huh, But it then does. all the edges of my blocks were coming open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good tip. Actually, I have gone into the memory of uh -huh. my sewing machine at home, uh -huh. and I have actually set the memory, the default, to my sewing machine to be at 1.9. Because my one at home goes to 1.9 nice. instead of 1.8. So it, it always, when it comes up, it's at 1.9. If I want to make it bigger, which is very rare, then I can manipulate it. If I want to make it smaller when I'm doing uh, foundation piecing or uh, fangles, I can do that. But normally, it just comes up automatically to 1.9. And uh, so when I take it in to be serviced, I have to tell the service person, don't mess with my stitch length. <laughs> because I've got it set, and I don't want to have to reset it. So you can see, each time that I'm uh, putting a new piece in, I'm taking the previous piece, and I'm laying it where it goes in the layout. You see that? Mm -hmm. So that I'm not getting messed up on my layout. And this is really important if you have a piece that is uh, directional, and you're concerned about the direction. And it's not hard to remember if you're taking them out one piece at a time. If I sewed all these together, then I'd have to stop and think about where all the pieces went after I took them out of my machine. So look at that. So then I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to sew it together. Use my, and I'm not going to pin because I don't have any uh, points or any seams that I have to worry about. Until I start putting those rows together, I'm not going to pin. Okay, open this up. And I'm just finger pressing right now because I'm going to come back before I put the rows together and press the whole thing. Which way does this go? It goes just like that. Okay, now I'm going to pick up this piece. And remember, I have only finger pressed this, so I am going to pin that so that that doesn't get... Uh, caught in my foot and now Peter's worried about my stiletto. I'm going to get my stiletto out because this is important that I keep these pieces together and that my stiletto is really handy because as I'm sewing this if my foot should happen to get caught in this seam right here and raise that back up like that I don't want to sew it like that, so I'd have to lift my foot up. Now, look at what's happened here. I don't know if they can really mm. tell, but see how that has slid over because uh -huh. I didn't pin it? Yep. Now I'm going to hold this down with my stiletto, and I'm going to move that over, and then I'm going to hold that together so that that does not slip apart while I'm sewing that. And see, I can get that right up in by my needle. Nice. Wasn't that nice? So that's how that goes. I'm going to take this piece... I'm going to look at my little chart here, and I'm going to lay that down. Then I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to sew this first. Now here's another good thing for my stiletto. I'm not going to pin right there, but man, do I have my stiletto ready in case that seam flares up. Well, it's not going to because I'm going to hold it down with my stiletto, and I'm not going to let it. So I'm going to pick this piece up. See that? I'm going to put that piece on. And I timed myself. And from cutting out to sewing, this block took me less than a half an hour. From, from picking my fabric, cutting it out, and sewing it together was less than a half an hour. If you can't find a half an hour in a week to make one little block then you're overscheduled yourself, okay? You need to uh, take some time for yourself and say, now, don't bother me. I've got half an hour. I'm going to sew this block. Don't, don't bug me. 
what is that? Don't tread on me or something. I don't know what that little thing was from the, from the, um, what am I trying to think of? 70s, from the 70s. Flower power and all that. Okay, now I don't have anything to sew. So instead of sewing on my leader and ender, I'm going to go over here to my potato chip walk <laughs> that's just sitting here waiting to be sewed. <laughs> just go ahead and start me a little potato chip block. And I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to sew me. Yeah, why just, why just work on one quilt when you can work on two? Heck yeah. I mean... What a great idea. Because, you what know, a great idea. all these could have been seams. Look at that. All those could have been seams on a block. I mean, you know what? I just love the idea of having two separate blocks cut out. Okay, now I've got all my rows made. So now I'm going to get my clapper. I'm going to take row one. I'm going to press the seams open. And don't you just love, I know you do, because uh, we've talked about this before, having a little pressing station right at your uh, ironing table, I mean your sewing table, right here at the sewing machine. Okay, now look at how pretty that is. And I'm going to, again, make sure I have it laid out right. See, I've got my book right here. I did want to tell you, uh, my book, I got it spiral bound. Let me go get it. You can go to the Staples or the Instaprint or, you know, any place where they uh, will do this and have your book spiral bound. And then it just lays out real nice and flat mm. when you're studying or you can go like that. Mm. Isn't that nice? That's cool. So I love having my book spiral bound. And uh, so I went and did that. I went and had that done. Uh, actually, Jeff here at the shop did it for me, but... Uh, we we, had, we got a lesson we, on how to do it. We did. We've got one of those machines, and uh, so we now we know how to do it, but we're not doing it for uh, everybody because we're not real professional at it. So go to somebody who's professional at it yeah, and they have won't, them they do won't it. Yeah, tear up your book. Yeah, yeah. Or crimp it wrong or, how you know... But anyway. Or, you know, if I did it, I might put your pages in the Oh, wrong my order. goodness. See, that, that's be what I would do, too. I, do I, would, I would be looking for the next page. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. Where did it go? And then it would be upside down yeah. somewhere else. exactly. In the book. Oh, look at how this is coming together, Peter. I love it. Uh-huh. Now, what does she call this block? Paper, Paper pen, pen wheels. wheels. I wonder how she got that name. Because it looks like one of those paper pen wheel things that used to make in oh, school. Oh, that you would make in school and mm -hmm. you would put it on a stick and you blow mm -hmm. on it? Mm -hmm. That is cute. That is how she got that name, I betcha. I'm just guessing. Oh, I think you're right. I'm just I, guessing. I think you're right. I think you, you're right on that. Okay. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Made sure that that's right. That's right. That's that looks right. bigger than four inches, Dawn. Doesn't it? It does. I've got, you know, half an inch here to oh. get rid of because of my seam. Oh. And th thanks for bringing that up, Peter, because I did want to show. Look here in the book. She is showing you this block already sewn into the quilt because look at your block. Look at this piece right here. Point? Yeah. Look, the point comes all the way out to the oh. end. On your block, it doesn't look like that because you haven't sewn it don't into cut anything. Off, don't cut off your points. Do not cut that off to the point <laughs> just because this picture shows it that way. This picture is sewn into the quilt, okay? So do not think that you have to have your block looking like that. I'm glad you told me that because I would have trimmed my block to look exactly like that. And that would have been four inches because that is four inches sewn into the quilt. Remember, our blocks are going to be four and a half inches because they've not been sewn into anything yet. So just because we're saying that we're making four inch blocks doesn't mean that they're going to be four inches the minute we make them. We're talking about two different things. Finished and unfinished. These blocks finished are going to be four inches. But before they get sewn in, they have a fourth of an inch seam allowance around each side. So that is four and a half. Get my stiletto in case something happens that one of these seams wants to pop up. 
Make sure I get my pins out of the way. This is this is the trouble place right there is when that that wants to uh, slide apart. Oh, love it. Okay, now I don't have another seam, so instead of using my uh, <laughs> my beginner and ender, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to make me another potato. Potato chip by making me a half square try. I mean a flying geese unit right here. Look at that, making good. I'm a good steward of my time. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, good steward of my time. Okay, I'm not gonna press that seam open because it can stay out of my way until I sew this one on, making sure it's going the right way. Yes, it all is going the right way. Oh, I'm so excited. This one's going to go into where, Peter? Where's this one going to go? I can't remember. In my memory box. I can't remember. And why does it have such good memories? Because my friend Peter bought me the fabric. And when I pull this out at the social, at the quilting social, and you know what? I am going to be going to a quilting retreat in August. Oh, fun. Uh, yeah, at Primitive Gatherings with the Moda Girls. Oh, yeah. We're all going to get together oh, that's and have a retreat. <gasps> and I think I'll take my memory box. The Moda Girls. The Moda Girls. They should make a calendar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we should, shouldn't we? <laughs> that would be a calendar I'd buy. Oh, yeah, the Moda Girl calendar. Okay. And each, and each month it features the... The girl that's on that um, month has their block recipe. Uh-huh. That'd be fun, wouldn't that'd it? That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be a fun uh, calendar. Not as fun as the Chloe calendar. Chloe calendar. She's my calendar girl, my Chloe. Okay, now I don't have another block. And I don't have anything else to sew, so what am I going to do? I'm going to pick up the potato chip block. You darn near got that block put together. I'm telling you, I've almost got this block sewn together. Wow. All because I used it as my beginner and ender. See that? Now, I'm going to cut one of these off so I can press it at the same time I'm pressing this other thing. Okay, let me, where's my clapper? Do you see my clapper? <laughs> oh, I put it back I don't here. Know. How in the I world can like... you, you, you know, <laughs> we only have this much space. How can we lose something? Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was a brain, um, one of them brain, um, I'm not going to say the F word, you know, F-A-R-T. It's not a, it's a brain bump. That's what I call it, a brain bump. You know, like those bumps uh, on the street <laughs> yeah, that you have bumps. to slow down for? Yeah. Yeah. That's when your brain slows down for the brain bump. That's what I call it. Even though I think F-A-R-T is a funny word to say, I don't think anybody wants to hear me say it. So anyway, now I've got, you know, my little pad here that I like to keep on my sewing machine so that when I got that all pressed out, Really press that good. Press it, press it good. I'm gonna put my clapper down on it. And look at how flat that lays. Oh my gosh, I just love my clapper. I love my clapper. That just lays so flat. Isn't that pretty? That now so see, pretty. look, look at so the block. Pretty. This oh, one's wow. this one's gonna go quilt, in my quilt. Quilt, quilt, quilt. This one's gonna go in my box. memory box. Isn't that pretty? That's now, what pretty. makes it so beautiful is the contrast it in is. the values. It's the, the three values, the light, light, even though medium. Really, if I'd use that, this yeah. could have been the medium. Yeah, it could have. Okay, but I want to use this as the light in all my that blocks. That's going to be stunning. Is that going to be just awesome? Yes. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. So next week, when we come together, we're going to make this block. So my memory block, this, the light part, mm -hmm. is going to be this. Ooh. And then I'll have to choose maybe one of those reds, yes. those dark reds, those reds are scrumptious. to put here for my little pinwheel. 
Okay, isn't that going to be fun? So look forward to making this one. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to be here next week. Where are you going to be? Uh, in Canton, Texas. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to go to the world's largest flea market. <laughs> what am I going to look for? A box. I'm going to look for a memory box and, and a, potato bag. a Charlie's <laughs> potato chip tin. Uh, if you guys, anybody oh, has geez. one out there that you don't want anymore, I'd be happy to have it. <laughs> I would be happy to take it off your hands because I need a Charlie's potato chip tin to put my potato chip blocks in. I'm going to make hundreds of these. I can't wait. I've already got a good start. Look, I've made this oh, one. Oh, wow. wow. One, what? two... Three, four, five. I'm gonna get me a Charlie's potato chip tin and put these in my Charlie's potato chip tin. But for today, I'm gonna on one side of my box, I'm gonna put my blocks that I'm making for my quilt. And on the other side, I'm gonna put my memory blocks. Isn't that awesome? It is. That's gonna be so fun. And I'm gonna keep those safe in my bride's box and right there they are now i'm going to try and uh just repeat fabrics and use from the scraps that i've picked out so now these are some of the uh pieces that i'm going to use in my memory blocks i'm going to call these the memory blocks i'm going to call these the quilt blocks because these are going to go into my quilt these are going to go into my memory box okay Peter is loving this Kim deal. Now, he loves it so much. So much, you guys. That he got on the computer. I did. Did some research. And he did some research, and he says, Dawn, I love that new collection you just got. What was it called? Something Rain. Right as Rain. Right as Rain. He says, I just love that collection. i got to have me some of that. So I went to Lenine. She's the lady who does all of our ordering. She owns the shop. She has the money. And, uh... She found out it was still available. Mm -hmm. The fat quarter bundle is still mm -hmm. available for Right as Rain. So we've ordered some. We don't know when they'll be here or if they ever will come because you you never know with fabric and order. And shipping. And, and shipping. Warehousing and, all that. and storage. And but we're excited about inventory. It. We're excited about the thought. But you know what? What? I was just thinking. What were you thinking? That. Because I like your idea of having multiple projects, you know, at your uh -huh. sewing machine. I could start with my um, coal and cheddar, cheddar and coal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You could do the whole thing with that cheddar and coal. That would be so pretty. So I saw pretty, that we so have pretty. one bundle left of cheddar do and coal. Do we really? Oh, yeah. that's such an awesome, such an awesome And I know collection. people out there have the cheddar and coal. Uh-huh. Because when you showed it, they bought yeah, it. Yeah, they bought it. But anyway, where was I? What was I talking about? Oh, because fat you were so bundles. excited. Yeah. We ordered some fat quarter bundles. We ordered a limited supply because, you know, we don't know how available they're going to be. I think we ordered six. I'm just going to tell you up front. I think we ordered six. That's right. Five will be available. Five will be available because one's going home with Peter. <laughs> but for our YouTube viewers, this is what we're going to do. They retail for like a hundred, uh, over $125. I'm not sure what the exact price is. But because you're one of our YouTube followers... This is what you need to do. You need to call Jennifer here at the shop. Peter's going to put her phone number down below in the drop box. Call Jennifer and say, i got to have me one of them uh, Kim Deal Fat Quarter Bundles for the 4-inch blocks. And Dawn said, because I'm a YouTube viewer and I'm part of her posse and I have subscribed and I have liked her videos, and I want to buy some of that fabric. I'm going to give you a discount. I'm going to make it $120 even. I don't know how much they're going to come in as. I know they're going to be over $125. I just don't know the exact price. But I'm going to give you a nice little discount of $5 or more. And we're only going to charge you $120. Now, that's only for five people. The first five people that call Jennifer... I gotta go tell Jennifer because I forgot to tell her before I started this video. I put a post-it note on the door to remind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So five people are gonna get a bundle for $120. Okay? So Jennifer will take your uh, credit card number. She won't uh, charge you until the fabric gets here. So if the fabric doesn't ever come, you're not gonna get charged for it, okay? 
but the first five, one, two, three, four, five people that call Jennifer. Now, if you call her and say, I don't know what you're talking about, it's because I haven't gone over there to tell her yet, so give me about five minutes, okay, before you go over there and tell her that you want a, one of those bundles so that I can tell her what the deal is. But anyway, if you want to do yours in the Kim Deal Fabrics, uh, the Right is Rain collection, which is her newest collection, just came out. Brand new. Brand new. Hot, Hot off, off the, the press. press. <laughs> ah! You owe me a Coke. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stephanie told me the other day. So anyway, that's going to be fun just for the viewers, for the Meet Me at the Sew Machine viewers. I'm so excited about this uh, four-inch adventure that we're on. And uh, if you don't have one of these, we're going to be using this throughout the whole thing. We're going to be making half square triangles using this ruler. And I'll tell you, if I don't use thangles for my half square triangles, I use this. I use this to square up my half square triangles before I press them open so that I am only having to do two cuts instead of four. And it just makes life go so much easier and faster. And they're so accurate. They're so accurate. You're not dealing with the bias. The bias has already been cut, okay? So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about this uh, whole thing. Um, I can't wait to tell Tammy about it. Tammy's going to pick me up at the airport tomorrow about noon. I'll get there about noon. And uh, hopefully I'll do some posting, okay? Now, can I post on uh, YouTube? No, you can't kind of post on YouTube. You can post in um, Insiders. I can post in the Insiders group mm -hmm. and on our regular uh, Facebook yes, group. Yes, yes. So, if you haven't subscribed to our Facebook channel, do you subscribe to Facebook? Yeah, you can subscribe to our Always in Stitches One Facebook group on Facebook. And our main page. And the insiders. That's and two And we different also things. have an insiders page too. So, it's a separate thing. Yeah, it's a separate thing. Now, the things that get posted to the insiders are kind of the uh, real special stuff. So you really want to make sure that you get in the insiders page because that's probably where I'll post, okay? Pictures of what Tammy and I are doing. Um, she just moved into a new house, so I'm going to help her decorate her, uh, her sew machine uh, room, her, oh. her studio. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about uh, she... Um, She's living with her mom, so I'm excited to get to see her mom. Hi, mom! Hope you're not, I mean, I hope you're watching. You're probably not. Uh, did I mention my friend Mary uh, Robinson that I uh, went to Ohio and painted this with? No. Well, my friend Mary Robinson, she lives in Las Vegas. She is the sweetest, dearest lady. She is one of those people that... Uh, you're lucky. You, you're blessed mm. if she has come across your path. Mm. And she, the other day I noticed she thumbs up one of my videos. She was watching one of my videos all the way from Las Vegas. Wow. Now, I haven't seen Mary. Now, I, talk to, I don't talk to her, but we Facebook back and forth every once in a while. She has like 200 kids. She's Mormon. She's just... A lovely person mm. just lovely and so you know they have big families they love they enjoy big families me there's just me and my sister that's and my, and my dad's two kids that uh, have adopted me but we have a little family so when I would go there to visit you know it would be a great big gigantic fun thing because there would be family everywhere and she's just such a a good mom, a good grandma, and I just love her to death. Can't say enough about her. And I miss her terribly, terribly. Because, you know, Las Vegas seems like a world away, doesn't it? When you're stuck in Anderson, Indiana, or Noblesville, Indiana, in the snow, you know. And uh, I miss her. I miss her terribly. So, Mary, if you're watching, do you remember us painting this together in 1990 with Helen Jagelink? I bet you do. I bet you have yours at home. <gasps> yep. Oh. Uh... Oh, wow. And if you do, Mary, oh you can gosh. post it on our Insiders page and say, look, I have one just like Dawn. It can be my memory box. So you painted that one. And so she has one she painted. She has one. Yeah, we did the study together. We went to the Helen Jeglick. So cool. Was the teacher. Wow. And we all painted. There were probably, I don't know, maybe 15 of us. And we all studied. 
the history of Pennsylvania Dutch style painting and bride's boxes and what it meant to the generation and how it came from Germany, how the Pennsylvania, how wow. the Dutch people come over into Pennsylvania and became known as Pennsylvania Dutch folk art. I mean, that's, you know, the folk art, it means really the, the art of the people. That's what folk art means to me. Uh, I don't know if that's the real description of it, but to me, in all my studies, that's what I came across with, is that it's the art of the people. And so the people of Pennsylvania that came over from Germany and settled in uh, colonies there in Pennsylvania, and we studied their art forms, and this is what Helen Jeglick, she, you know, kind of was a master uh, artist that taught us this style of painting so mary yeah mary has one just like it wow yeah so i'm excited about um everybody joining in finding a special box why don't you do some research or even go through your house i found one in my house did you yes are you gonna bring it and show it to us uh-huh oh i'm gonna be so excited now this weekend i was watching i don't know how long we've been here but it seems like uh, it's only been five minutes because I've just been so excited to talk to you. But this weekend, I spent a lot of time on YouTube watching some of my old videos. Really, I wasn't watching them. I was reading all the comments to make sure, you know, oh. we have to do that every once in a while because if somebody posts something new from a video a long time ago, we want to make sure they get their answers and mm -hmm. their questions answered. Very important. So one of the questions was, is Peter, we said there was going to be some big news. And we never heard what the big news was. And somebody went on and replied and said, Peter's back to riding horses. I'm back to riding horses. He's back to riding horses. And another new thing. I love the ponies. Yeah. And another new thing that Peter's doing is he's learning how to operate our computerized sewing machines. And he's teaching that here in the shop. And what's that called, Peter? Tell us about that. Pro Stitcher. Pro Stitcher. Pro Stitcher. It's one of these long arms, and you put the computer on it, and you you do all kinds push of button buttons. pushing. You push some buttons. And you figure out all the measurements, and you do all that. It takes a pretty smart I person. call it like a really oversized embroidery machine. Is but it's it it's not an embroidery machine, but that's what I call it. That's what you think of it as, huh? Yeah. Okay, but he's exci I'm excited to tell you that he's been doing that. So he's just multi-talented, and uh, we just can't do without him here at the quilt shop. And so come in, visit Peter. Uh, if you're interested in the ribbon runs through it, remember we have three kits. You can call Jennifer and talk to her about that. And uh, I'm not going to see you next Monday because you know where I'll be. Canton, Texas, at the world's largest flea market. Looking for. Yeah, it should be on your voicemail. I, know. I can't talk right can't now. Can't talk right now. Because I'm, I'm in Canton, Canton Texas. Texas, at the world's largest flea market. <laughs> <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so until I come back home, get busy, make some potato chip blocks, get your four inch, what we call that block, paper pin wheel block done out of your book. If you don't have your book, come in and get one. The Girl House Sampler. And uh, the instructions start on page 40. So I just put a little post-it note there. Because all this is, is little quilts that she's made with the blocks. So showing you different quilts that she's made with the blocks. So the instructions for the 72 uh, blocks start on page 40. And that this is number one. Okay? So get that done before I get home. And uh, I can't wait to see what all you guys are doing. So post it on the Insiders page. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.